I think I'm going for the record on the other end. I started Rotary about 14 years ago, and uh, finally I'm here in my class today. I think I'm close to the blue, though. I think this might be it. Um, well, first, I have to say thank you. Um, you know, to, to start with a joke, but this is really cool. When I was asked to first by sponsor, um, Jane, to be part of Rotary, I was humble. I mean, this is the, she brought me to my first meeting, and I said, really, the people of influence of Lobo get together at lunch on Mondays and sing? Like, what in the world is going on here? But I've just been blown away. At the time, I couldn't, my mom was sick with cancer, and I was taking care of her, so I couldn't put my all into it. But uh, this has just been really neat. So a little bit about myself. My name is Matt Albright. I am not from Pueblo, and I'm not running for mayor. So those are two things. <laughs> I actually, it's hard. I would take way over three minutes if I talked about myself, um, about where I'm from, because I really grew up a bit of a nomad. My father was in the aerospace industry, and we moved more times than I could count. I went to five different high schools. Uh, kind of switched every year. But at the time, sometimes very difficult, sometimes very fulfilling and fun. But it really gave me the ability to, to talk and be able to come up here and do this. And this is what I love to do. Uh, it's kind of neat. Uh, currently, I serve as the program director at the Center for American Values. And there I do just about everything. Anybody that's familiar with it, it's me and one other person. And uh, everything from fundraising to the PR to the marketing and also getting the students involved, which is another reason I love Rotary so far, is that it's very impactful in getting the kids involved at the ground level with the dictionary program and the four-way test and all the stuff we do. So, back again about me. I graduated from high school in Omaha, Nebraska. I lived in Germany, uh, California, Florida, Hawaii, all over. And I decided to go back to Hawaii for college. And uh, there I catch the acting bug and I end up in the entertainment industry. And uh, a couple big parts and things that never went anywhere, a couple tiny parts and things that were big. My last role was the, seriously, it was the sad sack of blank. And I thought, nah, maybe this isn't for me. So, um, at the time, I was living in Austin, Texas, and having a good time. It was a wonderful place to be in your 20s, and just having fun, mostly. Uh, then my father got sick. So I came back at the time. He had moved back to Denver. My mom was in Colorado Springs. So I ended up here in Colorado. And I thought, you know, maybe i got to finish that education I started years back. And I moved to Colorado Springs, and I'm going to stay there like two months, move to Denver, go to DU or maybe Boulder. And I meet a young lady from Pueblo. Here I am. Uh, when I, you know, she got a terrible accident driving back from Colorado Springs one time, flipped her truck, rolled it, uh, broke her legs, her back, uh, uh, both of her arms. And so I kind of ended up down here in Pueblo nursing her back. I'm down here all the time. You know? So basically commuting from Pueblo to Colorado Springs. But, and she goes, well, why don't you move to Pueblo? And I believe my words were verbatim, there is no bleeping way up in Pueblo, Colorado. And I did not say bleep it. Uh, but that's before I knew about this community. And I really have fallen in love with it. I know sometimes we hear folks that are from here, and they, they put it down. But sometimes I believe it takes an outside eye to really see the beauty of this place. I've lived here nine years. And this is the longest place I've ever lived, my nine years here in Pueblo, Colorado. And I've been humble and amazed how I've been able to get involved and, and really feel I can make a difference in the community, even on a small scale, and know people that are really making a difference. And to be part of Rotary, again, is extremely humbling. And if you want to know more, let's grab coffee, because i got a thousand stories that I could not say here because your mom's here. So, <laughs> well, that's, that's about it. Am I on time? It's uh, a party, and uh, she's my world. Uh, we, I waited a little longer than some people thought I had it all figured out. And just like my life, when I said, you know what, are we cool not having kids? You know, maybe we, we got great careers. Maybe this won't happen. About a week later, she walks in and brings me, my wife walks in, not my daughter, she obviously seems a baby, that was impossible. My wife walks in, brings me coffee in bed, and I said, you're pregnant. She said, how do you know? I said, well, this is the best case scenario for you bringing me coffee in bed. <laughs> the other way this conversation can go is not good. So yes, she's one years old, and I uh, tell you what, as any of you know, or many of you know, uh, she's at that point where she says daddy and all that stuff. And I mean, every day, no matter how tough it is, you walk in the door and you're reminded there's a bigger purpose. So thanks. <laughs>